Welcome to an evening in the upstate with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston, celebrating 10 years. Your co-hosts for this evening are Sister Pamela Smith and Michael Gordeen. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Michael Gordeen. And I'm Sister Pamela Smith. Welcome to the beautiful St. Anthony of Padua Catholic Church located in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. We first want to extend a special thank you to Father Will Brudmwapi and the parishioners at St. Anthony for allowing us to host our TV Christmas special here for the past 10 years. We're delighted to be celebrating 10 years of bringing you glad tidings on Christmas Day with our annual television special. Yep, that's right, Sister Pam. And although this is my first time on the show, I'm excited and honored to be your co-host this evening. First, we wanna tell you a little bit about our diocese. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston is comprised of the entire state. Our spiritual leader is Bishop Jacques Fab June. He was appointed by Pope Francis as the 14th Bishop of Charleston earlier this year, and he's taking many firsts. In the 200 year history of the diocese, he's the first Haitian born and the first black bishop to shepherd over our unique and culturally diverse church in South Carolina. We have 94 Catholic churches, 21 missions, 32 Catholic schools, two Catholic hospitals, an assistant living facility, and 12 Catholic charity centers across the state. Speaking of Catholic charities of South Carolina, the nonprofit was founded in Charleston on March 15, 1945. In its nearly 77 years of operation, this outreach organization has been providing care and services for our brothers and sisters in need. One of its ministries is called Clean of Heart, and it offers shower and laundry facilities to those without homes. This program reaches out to people on the margins who need more than just food and shelter. Just look at the good work they do. While South Carolina continues to grow in employment, home sales, and income, homelessness is a crisis in many parts of our state. The number of those in vulnerable and at-risk situations grows alongside us. To be the Church of Jesus Christ authentically, serving those at the margins, we have added to our outreach efforts and programs. Clean of Heart, which provides shower and laundry access at several locations, has expanded to meet growing need. Showering is something that we take for granted, and I think it's so important to remember that there's so many people who do not have this basic necessity, and it's something that can help them feel transformed and just really feel like they're receiving something so basic, but something so important. And so I think if we can continue to offer that to people who aren't able to have it, I think they can really feel the love of Christ and just feel that love and allow it to transform them. Privacy is a luxury for most homeless or at risk. Everyone deserves to enjoy a few moments of quiet and self-care. By partnering with different parishes for service locations, Clean of Heart mobile units will allow us to impact lives in a more efficient and meaningful way. It's really looking at each person individual, whether it is a volunteer or a client that you serve, but, but it's really going beneath that to see this individual man who just needs a shower, you know, or this woman who is just trying to feed her family and to so just look at this person, to look, to know them by name and to be able to hear their story and to feel their real pain in the community. Um, and then to be able to, yes, provide for their tangible needs, but also be a, com a positive community presence for them and to be able to share the love of Christ with them um, just in a simple encounter. To volunteer, learn more, or sponsor a mobile unit in your area, visit charitiessc.org. What a wonderful program indeed. It is, of course, supported by our new bishop who has a special Christmas message to offer us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we emerge from the season of Advent, we prepare ourselves for Christ's presence among us. A child was born in a small town called Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Then 33 years after his birth, 
He surrendered his body, carrying the weight of our sins in blood on his back, so that the gates of paradise might be opened and the veil between humanity and God might be lifted. In uh, the celebration of the Eucharist, the Word is made flesh, is truly present in our midst. In a way, every Eucharist is enjoying the reality of God made flesh among us. When we visit Christ in the tabernacle, we gaze at the magnificence of the child in the manger. Like the Magi, the wise ones from the East who came to give him homage, we are beckoned towards Jesus, enlightened by the star of grace. God's light within us. The angels that announce his birth, that holy night, are present at each Eucharistic celebration, proclaiming the holiness and might of the infant king. Christ did not come to the world in the form of a powerful noble. Through Mary, he was born of the line of Jesse as a small, defenseless child. This Christmas season, let us thank God for our anticipated Lord, Jesus Christ. His coming into the world is the greatest gift we could ever wish for. I pray for you and your loved ones that you may have a merry and blessed Christmas. Thank you, Bishop Jacques Fabrejean, and thanks to all our church leaders and those government leaders who work to establish greater peace and love in our world. Let's all continue to pray for our church, its people, and the strengthening of our faith. We have one of our faith leaders with us today. Sitting alongside me is Father J. Scott Newman, pastor of St. Mary Catholic Church here in Greenville. And we also have our royal helper, who's come to present a representation of a special gift, the gift of wonder. Thank you, royal helper. And welcome, Father Newman. Thank you, Sister. And now, Father, we've got this symbol of the gift of wonder, but can you tell us about the real gift of wonder? Of course, Sister. We start with darkness, the fact that this world can be so dark with violence and strife mm -hmm. and conflict in our own hearts and everywhere else. But when the world is filled with darkness, there's always light above us. And if we look up, we can see that light. You know, two of the most marvelous wonders of our world are the space telescopes mm. named for Edwin Hubble and James Webb. And they allow us to see into deepest space at the grandeur of God's creation. But that grandeur was known centuries ago by the psalmist. In Psalm 8 we read, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. Meaning that as magnificent as the heavens are, we are more magnificent because we are made in the image and likeness of God. And when that fact is obscured by the struggles and difficulties of our lives, we can find a new birth of wonder in the annual celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And it is that wonder that allows us to worship, because all worship is born in wonder. On the night of Christ's birth, simple shepherds, keeping watch over their sheep, were greeted by angels and given the good news of the birth of the Savior. Then we read in St. Luke's Gospel, when the angels went away from them, the shepherds, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened to us, which the Lord has made known. And they go and they see the Christ child and tell Mary and Joseph and all who were there what they've heard. Then we read, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. And this awakened in their hearts the gift of wonder, mm -hmm. surprise, delight, joy at the birth of a child 
who would be for all the world the Savior. That's our wonderment, Christ the Lord. And thank you so much, Father. I kept hearing in my head the wonders of his love, the wonders of his love as you were speaking. So wonder is a perfect gift for the Christmas season, something we all need. And now, back to you, Michael. A great gift indeed. I'm joined now by another royal helper, and we're gonna take you to Columbia, South Carolina, where Father Michael O'Keary will give us another gift. Father Michael O'Keary is the pastor of St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh wait, I just realized, if you're here, how are we gonna get the gift to Columbia? No problem, watch me, I'm the royal helper. I present you with the gift of zeal zeal for the heart of God. I ask you to set your hearts on fire for the love of Jesus. This is why this Christmas, I call us to newness, to renew our zeal in our faith as people of God. What is zeal? From the Oxford Dictionary, zeal is defined as great energy or enthusiasm in pursuing a course or an objective. In this case, we are talking about in pursuing our Christian faith. We are called to zeal, to newness, to strength, to vigor, and enthusiasm after we have been dampened in our faith by coronavirus. For the past three years, the world has suffered in the hands of this epidemic or pandemic. In this case, we have stopped coming to church. We have stopped communicating with one another physically in the church and worshiping God. Even in, in a Catholic church, receiving the, the Eucharist. However, a lot of people are still holding on to this past. It seems that we have become complacent and comf comfortable in, in giving the COVID-19 as an excuse for us to stay away from our faith, or even to practice and to become charitable to one another. Therefore, my dear ones, I present you with the gift of zeal. I ask you to set your hearts on fire for the love of God, because this is the reason why we are here. So many people died, so many people are not here with us, but we are here today. We need to set our hearts on fire for the love of Christ. Pick up your faith. Pick up your strength. Love. Put it in your heart. And practice your faith with zeal and love. And now, our traditional Christmas story, If I Were a Goose, told by Franciscan friar Patrick Tuttle. Once upon a time, there was a family that lived on a farm. And the family living on the farm experienced a difficult winter. It was such a difficult winter that the snow was not only falling like this, it was blowing, just blowing by, making big drifts. And it was Christmas Eve, and the mother of the family said to the father of the family, honey, we need to get ready to go to church. And he said, well, the storm is kind of rough out there. I think I might stay home and take care of the farm while you go to the church with the children. And she said, oh, honey, I really would like it if we could all be together as a family in church. He said, yes, yes, I know, but the storm is very bad, and I think I should keep the lights on and the heat on and the fire going because the storm is very bad. She said, okay. So she got the children all dressed up, and they went off to the church. Well, that father was sitting at home, tending the fire and trying to keep the home warm, and do you know he began to hear the strangest thing in the world? All of a sudden he heard and he wondered what that was and he went to the door and he opened up the door and that snow was just blowing by like that, just blowing and blowing and he could barely see anything but he could hear something. Honk, 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 honk. It was geese. They were flying in the blizzard, but they were blind, they couldn't see, and they were actually hitting the side of the barn. 
and some of them were hitting and dying. And he was thinking, oh, this is awful. Christmas night and all these geese are flying into the barn. I must do something. And he went, got his clothes on and he went out to the barn. He opened up the doors of the barn and he turned the light on. And he thought, surely the geese will see the light and they'll come in out of the storm. But you know, huh, huh, those geese didn't see the light. And they kept hitting the side of the barn. This is terrible, this is terrible. And he ran into the house and he got some of his wife's fresh baked bread. And he thought, this is great. They'll definitely smell this. And so he laid out the bread. He broke the bread and he laid it out in a line to the light. And when he broke the bread and laid it out, he was sure the geese would come and find the bread. But did they find that bread? Oh my gosh, they kept hitting the side of the barn. It was awful. He was thinking, this is terrible. Oh my gosh, when my wife and children come home, all these geese are going to be dying inside of the barn. This is awful. And he thought, oh my gosh, if only I could become a goose. Then I could honk and lead them to the bread and to the light. If only I could become a goose, I could lead them. Do you know that's exactly what God thought? When he said, if only I could become a man and lead them to the bread and to the light. Do you know of anybody who became a man like that? Did God become a man? Who? Jesus. Yes. And that's the reason why we tell this story. Because just like the geese, we can be flopping around sometimes and we don't know what to do and life hurts and, and, and the blizzard is too rough. We can't really see well and we need the light and we need the bread and we need to be guided. And so God sent us his son in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the cold to lead us to the light of his father's love. And now it's time for Sister Act 2 in the Kitchen with Sister Pamela Smith and Sister Roberta Fulton. Christmas greetings, everyone. I'm Sister Pamela Smith. I work for the Catholic Diocese of Charleston. Welcome to our cooking show, Sister Act 2 in the Kitchen. Merry Christmas. I'm Sister Roberta Fulton. Sister Pam and I have two delicious recipes that we're going to share with you today. We have selected two dishes that are not only delicious, but quick to make and go a long way. I will prepare a southern specialty called shrimp and grits, and Sister Pam will prepare a Swahili dish. I'll let her tell you all about what it while she's beginning her cooking. Thanks, Sister Roberta. The name of my dish is Wali Kwa Mchuzi, which is translated rice with sauce or rice with gravy. It's a Swahili dish. Wali means rice, kwa means with, and imchuzi means sauce. I got a little bit of this background from a man from Tanzania, and so it has become a favorite dish in our house. I'm gonna show you the ingredients for sauce that will serve four people. If you wanna serve more people, just do the math, multiply the ingredients to suit your number of people. The dish is served over rice, which we've got cooking on the stove already, but we've got a little bit of it here to show you that we get ready, enough for four. The rice will be ready for us when we need it. For the sauce, you'll need a number of things. You need two tablespoons of olive oil, which we have here in this little dish, a pound of okra sliced up into small slices. If you don't have fresh okra, you can use canned okra. You need at least a cup of peanut butter, but you see we have a very generous cup of peanut butter here. Seasoned pepper, which you use to taste, celery seed, again sprinkled to taste. You can use mustard seed as well, and minced onion. This can be a meatless meal, but on the side you can add meat and ring it, ring the dish with meat. Here we've got some chicken slices that'll be ready for you. Sister Pam, what if you can't eat peanut butter? Well, we have sun butter that's made out of sunflower seed, and I guarantee you it's yummy. It's an, a yummy alternative. So I'm going to turn the stove on, which is very helpful when you're cooking, and get things rolling. We just want to soften up the okra, and then we'll start adding some of the other ingredients. And this will simmer along for quite a while. Again, your tomato sauce. You can add more if you want more. Again, this is one of those things like grandma's recipes. Nobody ever told you how much. And I'm just going to stir it in. 
And I'm gonna hope that the okra stays a bit crunchy, but is soft enough to be edible. The big thing is to get that peanut butter in and get it melting. And I need a little bit more of this olive oil to go in here. I tend to be a big peanut butter fan, so I usually have a jar real handy and I keep looking at it and taste testing it. And of course I change spoons all the time when I taste test so as not to contaminate my relatives and friends. The other thing we want to do is put in a little bit of seasoned pepper. I tend to be one of those people who likes a lot of seasoning. So I'll be a little gentle here for you. Our celery seed, which I put in practically everything I make except fruit dishes and desserts. <laughs> and uh, then we've got minced onion. Again, this can be to taste, and I happen to live with a sister who isn't big on onion, so we just do what we can do here. Sister Pam, that surely smells good, and it looks delicious, too. I love shrimp and grits, and I want to do a wonderful dish this morning that can be served any time during the day. You can have it for breakfast, brunch, lunch, or dinner for any occasion going to be sauteing all of these ingredients together over here, putting in the onions, the green peppers, and by all means don't forget to coat it with a little olive oil. That just gives it the flavor it needs. And I'm going to turn the flame down a little bit so that it isn't overcooked and it's right at what we need. I'm going to put in, of course, we've got some Cajun pepper and that will make it delicious, but you have to remember don't put too much or it can really spice up your day and you'll have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're going to put in a little bit of bacon. And of course, if you can't eat bacon, you can substitute turkey bacon with it. The chopped parsley. And helping it to saute to the right point, we're going to put in that chicken broth. Look at that. It's going to do the work. And we're going to let it simmer here. And of course, I have to put in a little flour because I want it to thicken. But not too quickly. And to stir this and make sure that it's going to saute. So we're going to do that and keep it going here. And just sprinkle it easy and to get it to thicken just a little bit. I can smell it, I don't know if you can, but it's smelling very, very good. So hopefully it won't thicken it too much, but we're good to go with it. It's going to be all right. And I'm gonna let it just saute a little bit. I'm gonna put the shrimp in last, because shrimp, it doesn't need to cook very long. And so we're gonna let the shrimp come in last, and we're gonna let it saute in there. And we're gonna have us some delicious shrimp and grits. We're stirring this up and letting it saute, and it's smelling so delicious. And I'm going to put the shrimp in. You put the shrimp in last, and you let it just simmer, and you let those shrimp just cook. They're fresh. You don't need to cook them very long. Just give it a little bit of cooking, and we're going to put them right in here. And you have a southern favorite, a delicious shrimp and grits. Oh, it's thickening up so nicely. And we're gonna just let that cook and simmer. Our shrimp and grits, it's ready, and it looks delicious. And Wally Kwam Choosy is ready for our tasters. Mmm, it's tasty. I hope you enjoy those recipes as much as I enjoyed preparing them. 
We have one final gift to bestow. Alongside me is Mr. Larry McCullough and the St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School Choir. We're delighted to have all of you with us and welcome. The gifts of wonder and zeal have already been given. What gift can this choir give us to complement those? What can possibly top those two special gifts? Sister Pam, I must admit, topping those gifts is going to be a challenge. It has to be a special gift. I'll let Victoria tell us what that gift is. Miss McCullough, this is the greatest gift of all. Everyone should know what this gift is. Our choir will tell us what that gift is within the song. Special gift. Great job, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, we wonderful. It. Well, that concludes our evening in the upstate with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston and our 10th year celebration. May the gifts you receive tonight, wonder, zeal, and our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, be your joy and remain with you always. And remember, if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. For your nearest location, find us online at charlestondiocese.org. On behalf of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston, Bishop Jacques Fabre June, and the people of God in South Carolina, we love you and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas.